Hey everyone, here's a quick video tutorial on how to notate for Shinobue, the Japanese bamboo flute, using Logic Pro as a digital audio workstation. You'll already need to know how to input MIDI data into your DAW using like a MIDI controller or keyboard or other method. And as you can see, I'm going to let this play. I have here a Fue track, a track for Shinobue that I have as MIDI data that I want to be able to notate and, and print out a score of. And um, I can see all the MIDI data here in the piano roll. I can actually quickly generate a score just by going to the score viewer. And you see that I have a you know Western staff notation, treble clef um, uh, score for this music. So if if that's all I need, that you know, just print that out and, that, and that's good. But um, I'm gonna stop this. For Shinobue and other forms of kind of traditional Japanese music, um, we're gonna use numbers to represent the degrees in a scale. So uh, Shinobue with um, six fingers down uh, is kind of the uh, what the first degree or, or I guess what we call one. That note uh, C would be one. So that's six fingers down with I guess that pinky hole open. Uh, so um, and then you know as I lift fingers off so with only five fingers down now that's D. Now I lift one more finger up and it's E, F, G, A, B. And we can just uh, notate that as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. By the time we get to the next degree, we're back at C again, and that's going to be a new octave. Um, so for uh, Shinobue music, oftentimes we write the low octave as kanji or you know traditional Chinese characters that represent the numbers one through seven. Uh, for the next octave, we use the Arabic numerals one through seven, and then for the highest octave, um, sometimes it's circled or there's a dot next to it to to signify um, it's the the high high octave. Um, so yeah, so that's that's gonna we want to try to simulate that using what we already have here in Logic Pro. So um, that this is this is what I kind of recently figured out, and I just want to share this for anyone else who's in the same situation, uh, taiko player who's you know composing or transcribing um, uh, music for Shinobue. So um, the first thing we're going to do, we'll get into it, is we are going to duplicate this region because what we're going to end up messing up the MIDI data. So you're not going to want to do it to your actual uh, track. We're going to I'm going to put Command D. You can also find this through Track Other New Track with Duplicate Settings, and I'm just going to copy this region. So I'm put it in the same position, and I'm going to mute it here. Actually, um, just make sure you know uh, keep track of which one switch because one of them is going to be altered kind of significantly. Uh, so this one here, um, I'm going to go to score, and now um, there's a kind of a nice feature already built in uh, for uh, tablature that I want us to explore really quick. Um, and I'll show us how to, to, to switch uh, you know, our, our sheet music in a section, but this, this is a good place to start. So tablature is another system of notation that uh, guitars or string instruments uh, use where zero represents an open string, and for each fret up the fretboard, um, you just add a number. So the first fret one, second fret two, th third fret th you know, three. And then um, by drawing onto uh, the, the different lines, so for a six string guitar, you'll actually have six lines, right? And then the number that appears on that line that corresponds to that given string is like what fret should be should be pressed to make that note. So it's a very kind of visual way to see what notes being played. In the same way that for Shinobue, just knowing that number automatically gives me my fingering, right? So we're gonna have to go ahead and kind of hack this system. So um, what you'll do is you're gonna pick one of these. None of these are gonna be preset for you. Um, so in this case, um, I've already kind of messed them up. You can see some some of these are have been modified, but we're gonna go and let's let's go ahead and corrupt this one or or corrupt it for our purposes. That is, where this this six string bass uh, with a, a C root or a C in the bass, uh, whatever. Uh, we're gonna call this is the one we're gonna use. So we're gonna remember that this is the one where we're hijacking. We're gonna have to come back to this later. Um, what we're gonna say is we're we're gonna say it has three strings, and and this is what we're going to use to represent the three octaves of the shinobu. Um, now what we're going to need to do then is, is so we're going to need to set each of these quote strings to to be um, an octave so they'll be the same note but what note that is is going to depend on your shinobu. Uh, in the case of an eight hon uh, shinobu which is um, you know corresponding to the C major scale um, remember that one is C, right? Um, and, and so I can't actually have this note be C here. I need it to go down uh, once. So I need it to go to B. Um, and then I'll just set these other ones also to B in, um, oops, uh, in, uh, 
one octave between each of them. So we'll go B negative two, we'll go B negative one, I suppose, and then uh, let's go B uh, zero, uh, oops, that's this way. Uh, yeah, yeah, oops, okay. Yeah, and, and you just gotta like, okay, so the way, if you're confused about how to do that, you grab it, and then you drag up or down. It's a little, you gotta play this little game to do it, but um, it's a little sensitive, but okay, here we go. So now, so what we've told it is that we're playing a three string instrument here with one, sh the lowest string, uh, or I guess the first string, right, in this column here, um, as uh, uh, this, this B, uh, and an octave up for that next string, and then an octave up for the next string, right? So we're not actually, you know that that's what it that's what we've told it right. We're gonna we're gonna corrupt this for our purposes though. So go ahead and close this out. Um, so I've just defined that tablature, um, but I you know it doesn't you you see it hasn't changed anything right. That's that's just a setting I needed to update first. Um, the way that we actually uh, get the sheet music to display in a different you know type of style is going to be through this menu here. So if you ever lose this, this goes away. It's super ephemeral. Like you know you start doing something, it's gone. Just go ahead click your region, make sure your score editor is open, and then it's here. Um, and I think if it's, if you're not seeing that whole, um, you know, sidebar, it, you know, it's, this is your information um, sidebar. Uh, I don't know if it's got another name. Okay, but anyway, so um, so, so we're here now, right? So um, this is also like, you know, if you're composing for other instruments like a trumpet, right? Trumpet is an instrument in B flat. Um, you you have the, the MIDI data, you know, the sound that you want that, uh, is, is one thing, right? But they're gonna be reading it kind of different. And so if I wanted them to play this same note, I would actually need to transpose those up to, um, you know, so, and the reason for this is actually, you know, it's kind of the same reason for, uh, you know, shinobi of different uh, sizes. Uh, I can use the same fingering. Same thing for, you know, brass and woodwind instruments. This allows a family of instruments to share the same fingering. And instead of transcribing the notes and making them remap their fingers to the music, we're going to just remap the music to their fingers. So, so this, you know, if I know that um, uh, this F right here is this finger or something, right, then uh, then if I'm, I'm playing a you know slightly different instrument um, in that family, right, I don't have to relearn the, the the fingering, right? So good reason for that. It's actually kind of intuitive in what we're trying to play with Shinobi too. Um, but we need to do it for our purposes now. So we're not going to use trumpet and B flat. We're you know we, you can see that there's not one already for us. Oh, th this one's not going to be in yours right away. This is one I made earlier. Um, so w what we're going to have to do is uh, let's go and make our own style. And the way we're going to do that is going to lay out show staff styles show staff styles um, and then we're going to go to um, make our own here so we're going to go new let's do one that just we just need a single staff here um, we'll call this new one i'm going to just call it test uh, you can name it whatever you want i already have one named shino shinobue so uh, or maybe you want to call it like shinobue uh eight right because this is specifically yeah for our uh our shinobue eight hon um, uh, I guess so, uh, and then, so this is what we'll be doing. So down here we can edit the, um, like what this style is expressed as, right? It lets us, um, change the, the clef or, or, or manually transpose it, I guess, or, you know, have, have it automatically transpose. So if, for, so for instance, like, let me just show you real quick, the, where is our, our horns and, or in E flat or our trumpet in, in B flat, right? You see what it's doing when I've selected the stylus trumpet in B flat is that it's, it's just transposing every note up to, and it, and it knows the, the clef that's appropriate for this instrument as well. So for our new style, which I guess I didn't save the name as, sorry, Shinobu 8, eight enter, okay. Um, we are gonna choose for the clef, not one of these ones, but the one that we co-opted earlier, which I believe was this one. Right, so now, hey, cool. That's there's a tab with uh, three um, strings, or in our case, octaves, um, that is selected. So cool. So let's go ahead and we can close out of that. That's what we need to do um, as far as we need to go there. We can go now to our style uh, menu and choose that Shinobi eight. And now you see, oh, cool. So now our music is being expressed. Um, this way. And now this, this is not useful for us, right? Remember, we, we define these as like three really low B. So to get that first note, we're going to have to be up on the 12th fret, like a full, I guess, full octave up um, from, 
where we need it to be. So, um, uh, but that's not important. Sorry. So th these are these are not your actual music. So we now now what we got to do is our transformation. Here's the the step that is a little tricky. So uh, we're gonna go to the piano roll here and, and make, making sure that we're using the, the one we wanna transform. And we can actually select all the notes of the same pitch just by clicking uh, the uh, key here, right? So this, um, the highest note in our whole thing is uh, A, A4 in this case, and we're gonna have to remap it. And remember we said that our octaves are, we said B negative one, B zero, and uh, B1. So let's say we want to make this in the, let's say the, um, it, a lot, oftentimes uh, the, the first and second octave are used, right? Um, uh, I mean, you can do however you need to, but let's say I want this to actually be the second octave of the Shinobi. I'm going to do, I got to move it down there. And, and the quick way to do that, if you hold option uh, and, oops, sorry, option shift and the down arrow, it's going to pop it down a whole octave. So we're just going to pop it down, pop it down all the way down here to our, where we're actually writing. And so, um, if you, if you let go of the shift and now if you're just holding option up and down, this just lets us move all these selected notes up or down, um, uh, a, like a semitone. Um, and so let's go here. So our, so this is what we said was our, our middle, like the starting our middle octave, or I guess technically here, right? This is one in the second octave. And we know that this was a, which was six, remember in our scale. So the trick here is now we're gonna have to count semitones. So, so from, from the C, which is one, we'll go two, three, four, five, six. And let's just go, let's make sure that's what we're seeing here. When we jump back over to our tab, whoa, oops. Yeah, sorry, I think I was in a different one. Um, but yeah, so, so now we see, okay, uh, yeah, so, there we go, it's six in that, that middle line representing the middle octave. So let's go ahead and do that for all our other ones. So what might be useful is if you're doing this is just to just write down just on a, on a piece of paper next to you or something or notepad um, the, the corresponding notes with their, I guess their degree. So, you know, C as one, D as two, E as three, F as four, G as five, A as six, and B as seven for the case of our eight hone uh, Shinobi. So now we, we just got to go and, and, and put them all in their place. So this G, we know G is five. We're gonna shift option down, down, down to where the action is. Oh, I went too far. Um, and it was on this octave remember so this is one two three four five great that's good let's go ahead and do this one so we know if you if you need to see a note too you can always hover over it e is three let's take this one down to join the others um and that's one two three you'll notice that we don't have a four uh, and that's kind of often for like pentatonic music, or you'll, you'll kind of notice that a lot of music, uh, even in, in Fue, it doesn't always use all the notes either too. Um, okay, well, that's not super important. What's more important, let's just get this done. So let's go ahead, D, we know D is a uh, two, oops, let me octave jump that. So we're gonna, we need to get this to that position that is the second degree in our second octave. So here's a B here, so one, two, Great, and you'll see that like it, they kind of will take a like kind of a facsimile of the pattern here, right? So this one was our um, our one R C, uh, yeah. So that goes down here. Um, this one is our A. So now we're we're down in the next octave. So it's the six of the next octave. Let's drop that down here, and just to practice. So here's our lowest octave here, the B here. What we're on will go one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you see, like, so now it's, it it doesn't really look like our music anymore. It's not it's not actually right. We're we're just hacking its system. So this oops, gotta select all of them. Our G is five. Let's drop that down here. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five. I hope that's clear how I'm counting that. Um, our last one, uh, our E's. We're gonna drop them down. E's our threes in this case, and just to just to really reiterate, so what I'm doing is I'm counting from the, what we defined as the open string here, um, which was a B, uh, B negative one, which is where it is now, um, I'm gonna go three from there. So one, two, uh, three. 
Cool. So, uh, yeah. So, so now it doesn't look, or, or let's, you know, just for fun, why don't we listen to it? So you'll, you'll see this does not sound good. Oh wait, can you hear it? Oh, it's so low. Okay, you're not gonna even be able to hear it because it, it's it's so low. Um, in the in in this case, sorry. You you could just you could define. You don't have to define them as low as I did. You can you can use kind of whatever arbitrary uh, scale you need. Um, but let's go ahead and view the the score now. And now we have okay, cool. Um, this this looks totally readable from a Shinobi perspective. Uh, one thing we might want to do though is um. You know, it's it's a little kind of funny, just the the numbers just sitting there, and we're still using some kind of um, you know uh, Western staff notation, the eighth notes, and um, I think what gets tricky sometimes is the like this the six here. If you can see my mouse, uh, right, it's not clear intuitively that that's a dotted half note necessarily, right? I, I mean, you 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 could figure it out based off the length of the bar and knowing that this is four four time, but let's just make it as simple as possible. I think what we can do. The head style that I prefer is this black uh, for uh, quarters and um, eighth notes and, and white circles for uh, whole notes, half notes. So now it's, it's pretty pretty simple, right? We can see, um, yeah, that this are, we, we get a sense of the timing and the, uh, the octave we're using. So in this case, we're not actually using the kanji to represent the low octave. It's, it's the ones that are on the lowest line. The next oct the next line up is representing the next octave up, and then the line above that. So in this case, this this melody that I have written out only uses two octaves. If I wanted to, let's say, you know, I actually want those to be all uh, an octave higher, I could go back to my piano roll, and I can command all select all of them. I'm gonna option shift up, pop everything up an octave. And you'll see now that, look, they've all popped up an octave here now. So just remember though that for our kind of, our notation track, this this is all gonna, this, this is bogus in terms of um, its musical data. I'll, let me just for fun, I'm gonna kind of hear how bogus this sounds, but I wanna prove to you how dumb it sounds. Oof, right? It's not good. It's not what we what we wrote, right? Um, so you can't use this track to represent musical, you know, data as far as MIDI is concerned. But it's going to be useful for our um, our notation, our, our reading it, right? Let's not listen to that. Okay, and you can, you know, be, but because of that, sorry, that, that goes to say that you you can't um, listen and look at this to you know, to correct yourself at all, you, you, you need to kind of spot check it yourself. Maybe you could, maybe one way to do it is just what we're doing now is like making sure that <laughs> this makes sense with your instrument, right? Um, and we're also just making sure that, you know, we could really mess it up if we're not doing our transformation correctly in those steps I just uh, showed you where we're, you know, we're dropping uh, their, their placement. And just to review, like, I guess the reason we're doing that, right, is because for a Western scale um, or for, for a guitar, right, e each fret would represent a semitone or you know one half step from a B to a C to a C sharp to a, um, a D <laughs> you know and so on right but we, we want we want those numbers in this case to not represent uh, semitones we want them to represent degrees or, or notes in a scale so uh, so we've just kind of hacked the system by by doing this this crazy you know, remapping, right? Where we're counting, we're, we're placing the things that are uh, one degree up, uh, one semitone up, right? Um, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, if, if not, you know, just, just you know, figure out the algorithm and how, like, where you got to put the notes. Remember that you can select all the notes at once and move them together. That makes something that instead of, you know, having to do it for every note in your, uh, your whole score, you're really just doing it um, per uh, pitch and you know there's there's really a finite number of those actually so it ends up being a lot easier to um, to do than maybe it seems. I think that's everything. Um, let's see. I th yeah. So um, you know you get this type of uh, shinobi kind of music for you to to use to to give the players to practice on and stuff. Um, you you know using those same principles right we can define. Uh, different um, scales, like if we needed zero to be the first degree instead of one, right? That's very easy, right? All we have to do then would be to change our uh, tablature kind of definition so that 
um, instead of uh, V being the open string or the zero, it would be uh, C in the case of our instrument, which is in a C major scale, right? So, so it, it's fully kind of modifiable to your needs, right? Um, maybe at another point, I, I'll try to do something like this for shamisen, where you could potentially have different notes played on different strings, and and, and you know, and, and so knowing how to map that too would be a ne the next kind of step thing. But this is something I just figured out, something that is super you know useful for me. I hopeful useful for you too, um, and yeah, just. Maybe quick plug if you want to come to the Davis Cherry Blossom Festival this uh, April 13th and 14th, uh, then you'll hear this perform live. And hopefully you can use this technique to, to make your music uh, come to life in your own groups uh, and stuff as well. So thank you. And I think that's all I got. Thank you.